Welcome back to the Flow Friday Night Sports Show. We're taking a look at mid southeastern football and netball now, and our correspondent, Roly Day, joins me on the line. Roly, welcome back again. How are you? Yeah, going well. Uh, thanks, Dan. And, um, yeah, just uh, getting ready for the big uh, Robe Footy Club presentation night. So trying to make myself a bit more beautiful than I already am. Oh, very good. <laughs> Pulling out the uh, suit and tie tonight. Yeah, hopefully it still fits, mate. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> yep, no, it should be a good a good evening. Oh, very good stuff. Sounds like it's going to be a cracker. And Robe had a little bit of uh, success on Saturday in the footy and the netball in mid southeast, And we'll get to them in just a moment, but we'll just touch on the A and the B grade for starters because it was a good day for Kalangadu. They won both the A and the B grade on just looking at the scores in the A grade, it looked like it was a pretty, well, a very, very windy day. Clearly a scoring end. The lead changed with every quarter and Kalangadu came home with the wind and kicked four goals to two to come out on top 10, 10, 70 to 10, 4, 64 over Hatherley. Yeah, you're right there, Dan. It was a, yeah, there was a breeze uh, all day. So it was right from the junior cults all the way through the day. It was, but it was a beautiful day at uh, Port Mac. You don't often get sunburn at Port Mac, but I did last week at uh, yeah, no, uh, Hatherley came out and, and were all guns blazing and showing the the uh, the form that had, had got them there. They'd really ran over um, both Robe and Port Mac in the finals and uh, it looked like they were going to carry that through. But Kalangadu, to their credit, and, and they are, they're just a, a very hardened side, finals hardened side. Um, they just came back and then uh, Hatherley put the foot down again in the in the third quarter, but just... Just probably didn't put enough on the scoreboard for that quarter, and then Kalangadu coming home with the wind um, just ran over the top of them. But it was a yeah, really good game, close all day, and and only six points in it in the end. So uh, yeah, no, it was a cracking game of footy. And in the B grade, it was well, it was the same story. Kalangadu over Hatherley, thirteen four eighty two to ten five sixty five in this one. Not as obvious looking at the scoreboard that there was a uh, massive wind. There were a couple of the quarters were a little bit closer, but I'm assuming that wind was around for the B grade as well. Yeah, it was Dan. Um, yeah, and again. Hatherley came out um, firing from the first quarter and, and Kalangadu looked a bit steady um, uh, to start with. And then in the second quarter, they put a few older heads in into the middle there and um, Simmons and a couple of the Mules boys and those sort of fellas that have played a lot of footy and are excellent footballers. And they just got on top in the middle, started winning it out and I think they kicked six goals in the in the second quarter. So... That sort of set them up, and then they never looked back from there. They just uh, powered on and uh, had a good win over over Hatherley, who uh, have been the team to beat for the last probably four years. All right, very good stuff in the A and the B grade. Well done to Kalangadu on securing the double there. But let's have a look at the under 17.5s. I reckon at the start of finals, you're probably looking at the ladder thinking Robe sitting in fourth at nine and seven. Well, maybe they're just making up the numbers, not a great shot to win the flag, but well, they won by 58 points in the grand final over Port McDonald, 18-13, to 10-3-63. So what is going on here? What has gotten into those Robe under 17.5s come finals time? Yeah, well, as I've been saying to Wayne all year, it's uh, they're a funny age group, the uh, under 17s, and... Uh, and one week they'll be on, and the next week they'll be off. But they, uh, they've they certainly been on for the last month, and uh, they played some really excellent footy uh, all through the finals. And, and as you say, they were lucky to get there. They only won the last game by a goal, and they had to win that game uh, to make the finals. And then, yeah, I don't know what flicked the switch, but they, uh, they've they come out and played really good footy all all final series, but uh, yeah, I got there about five minutes late, and they'd already already hit the front at that stage. They were three goals up, and uh, just played really good footy all all game. And uh, Max Robinson kicked seven goals from he played in the middle and swapped up forward, and he swapped with Daniel Noonan who kicked six goals as well. So pretty good effort by those two boys swapping at full forward and playing on the ball. And then Nath Gibbons and Flynn Peel and Caden Carter. Caden's a good story. His uh, his dad booked a trip, a surfing trip to the Philippines mid-year because he didn't think the uh, boys were going to go to. <laughs> so, so Caden uh, begged his dad to leave him home, and uh, he's a he's a mad surfer, Caden himself. But uh, 
he got to play in the flag and then they had to reschedule the flights and he, he took off on Tuesday to, to go surfing. So he's had the best of both worlds. And he's found himself in the best players, young Caden. So that is a great story. And yeah, well, he made the right choice in the end. He might have been a bit dirty if they'd ended up losing, but what a sensational turnaround from this road team. You're right, it's a it's a funny age group and you, you never know what they're going to produce on the day, but that is an unbelievable turnaround in only the space of the month. And what are they feeding these boys? We've, we've only had four goal kickers in a game where the team have kicked 18 goals, seven to Robertson and six to Noonan. Like you said, that is just unbelievable stuff and... Clearly, a very uh, powerful forward line. Yeah, no, they're um, they they are like Daniel Noon, and he, he's uh, sort of laconic, I suppose, and and uh, he doesn't look like he's doing much. But when he gets the ball in his hands, he uh, he knows where the big sticks are, and he, he uh, threads them through. He doesn't miss too many. Um, yeah, so they played really well. And Maxie Robinson's just a big, strong lad, and uh, he's going to go a long way in his footy. That's for sure. He's played a fair bit of senior footy for for a robe this year and a, and a bit of Glenelg uh, underage stuff as well. So Maxie's probably, uh, you know, hopefully can go a long way in his footy. Sensational. Well, a very dominant display by Robe. They had 70 points on the board at halftime. Port McDonald scored 63 for the game, which is not a... Uh, sp- it's not a bad effort. 63 will win you a lot of games in this age group. But uh, on this day, it wouldn't have even... Uh, it didn't even outscore Robe's halftime score. So a very, very bright future for Robe. And uh, Kalangadu and Hatherley will be... Uh, well, they'll, they'll be aware that the young Robe boys will be on their toes. And hopefully Robe will be back in the A and B grade final pictures uh, next year. But yes, well done to the Robe under 17.5s. And in the under 14s... Uh, mixed comp. It was Glencoe over Port McDonald, 2-11-23. A bit of wayward kicking, but it didn't stop them from getting the win, as Port McDonald were 2-1-13. That's right. Yeah, if they'd, if they'd kicked straight, it would have been a, a huge win. But uh, yeah, like I say, the wind was blowing around a fair bit. You only have to kick more than the other team, don't you, to win. So that's what they did, and they came away with a good win. That is right. That's all you need to do to win. And let's turn our attention to the netball now. In the A grade, Kalangadu beat Tantanula 66-40. to Absolutely no surprises there. Capping off an undefeated and very, very dominant season. Good effort by Tantanula to make it to the grand final from third. They only won their first final by a point. But let's look at the A reserves. Robe uh, securing another premiership here in this grade. They beat Kalangadu 45-30. to So a very good effort and once again capping off the undefeated season yeah they, those girls had a great year they um yeah as you say just went through undefeated and um yeah pretty determined bunch they um alana jennings played um i think she was wing uh goal defense i think um and just cut off everything all day and i remember a coach of mine saying you can see it in their eyes when people are ready to go and looking at some of those girls they were uh so determined. Um, Kim Ross, who uh, was a runner-up best and fairest for the league, she uh, she was really good all day too, playing in the centre. I think it's been 20 years she won an A reserve flag 20 years ago and, and won another one now. So she's been around for a while and, um, yeah, played a really good game. And uh, Sarah Laurie up forward too is a really, really good shooter and she didn't miss too many for the day. So it was a, it was a really good game there. And then... Um, going on down with the B grade, which uh, our girls played in too, so, uh, which was really close. Clangadoo won 44 to, to row 42, but that was in extra time. So it was a draw at the end of the game and uh, a real nail-biter, and our girls just couldn't get over the line. But uh, they all played a really good game, and, uh, yeah, Clangadoo were just too strong in the end. Well, that answers my question about how they managed to uh, score 20 goals in the fourth quarter, those B-grade robe girls, because, yeah, every other quarter they didn't even reach 10, and then suddenly in the fourth, 20 to 15, obviously mounted a very good comeback to force overtime, but uh, Kalangadu too good in overtime there. So that wraps up footy and netball in mid southeast. That has been a very good season and it looks like it was just a sensational grand final day and there's a few uh, junior best and fairests to announce. Is that right, Roly? Yes, we had our um, the footy uh, uh, medal night on Wednesday night for the, the juniors and, and the captain of the senior Colts, Flynn Peel, who um, 
is a real, uh, really good leader and a really good footballer. He's been playing a lot of senior footy the last couple of years. He won the best and fairest. So well done to Flynn. And uh, runner-up was uh, the ba- uh, the boy we were just talking about, Maxi Robinson. So he um, he was runner-up. And in the junior Colts, uh, no surprises here if you've been listening to the the Flow FM show. Johnny Hinchcliffe won the best and fairest. He's been in the best players. I think every game of the year. So well done to Big John and and runner up was Flynn Collins, who was the same. It was both of those guys have been in the best players every week and they've had great years. And Flynn actually played in the Senior Colts Grand Final as well, so he's had a good week. And uh, so all those boys did a really good job. Uh, I haven't got the netball results, sorry, but uh, yeah, that's the boys that uh, did well in the in the BNFs. There we have it. Well, congratulations to all of those medal winners and to all of the premiers in mid Southeast footy and netball as well. Great to have another season wrapped up. And Roly, I'm sure if you're like any of the other correspondents I've spoken to, the end of the footy season it does not mean time off. It means straight into summer sport. That's right. And uh, yeah, there's uh, Rove have got uh, the two tennis teams in the town again this year, so that's good. If anyone wants to hit a tennis or I know the cricketers are looking for, for more players all the time and uh, I think there's a few basketball teams getting around too. So if, if you're in the area, new to the area and you want a game of summer sport, um, put the feelers out and, and I'm sure you'll be welcomed with open arms. But uh, yeah, so it's all, it's all go down here for sure. And a huge thanks to Wayne too for the, the job he's done this year and over, I don't know how many years he's been doing it, but it seems forever. And I know he's appreciated all over the state for just his huge knowledge and his memory, memory of players from all the leagues and things like that. He, he, you guys do a great job. And, uh, yeah, thanks very much for all, all the efforts from the Flow FM team. Great to hear that update. Thank you, Roly. And great to have mid Southeast football wrapped up for another year. And what a way to end it with a sensational grand final day. And Ellis, that was a big first hour. Lots of great footy uh, wrapping up this weekend. And of course, grand final action in the AFL tomorrow. But uh, yeah, country footy, what a season. Yeah, it is the Flow Friday Sports Show repeated tomorrow morning between 8 and 10 a.m. Dan, huge first hour. Massive second hour to come. Still to hear from Bruce Phillips. And we've got that big AFL Grand Final to preview too with the likes of Clayton and Wayne joining us as well. That and more to look forward to in the second hour of the Flow Friday Sports Show tonight. So stay tuned. We'll see you back here real shortly.